Now let us discuss that what do we mean by law of gearing and what is the law of gearing we have to discuss. We say that in the gears we have to maintain the constant angular velocity ratio at each and every instant right this is the our basic need in the gear mechanism that we have to maintain the constant angular velocity ratio at each and every location at each and every instant right so we need to maintain if i write here this is our main goal to maintain constant angular velocity ratio constant angular velocity ratio between the two mating gears constant angular velocity ratio at each and every instant at each and every instant we have to maintain this constant angular velocity ratio this is our goal so the law of gearing says that to maintain this constant angular velocity ratio the line of action that is the common normal the line of action where this line of action means at each end uh, because along this line of action the total force will be there so line of action must always pass through a fixed point and that fixed point is known as pitch point on the line joining the centers of rotation of gears right common normal will always pass through a fixed point that is that fixed point is known as pitch point and and that line is and that pitch point will be on the line joining the center of rotation of the gears right this is our law of gearing to maintain this constant angular velocity ratio now let us see that now let us define this suppose we have these two bodies right this is our body 1 and this is body 2 suppose this body is rotating about this center of rotation right about this center of rotation let us say this is o2 this point is o2 and this body is rotating about this center of rotation let us say this is point o4 right now if we talk of, if we say that this is a mechanism this is a kinematic chain and here we have revolute joint here also we have revolute joint and when they where they these two bodies will be in contact we have a higher pair here we have a higher pair so if i say that if suppose this fixed link is link number 1 this o2 is or this fixed link is link number 1 this body is your link number 2 and this body is your link number 3 right this body is link number 3 and this is the line joining the centers of rotation right suppose suppose this these two bodies that is body 2 and body 3 is at is it contact at this point let us say this point is q let us say this point is q and this line this line is a common normal if i write this line is a common normal at point of contact common normal at common normal at point of contact right i draw a common normal at this point of contact and suppose this common normal will cut this line joining the center of rotation at this point and this is let us say p this point is known as pitch point this point is known as pitch point so the law of gearing says that this common normal or this line of action this is also known as line of action of two mating gears to maintain a constant angular velocity ratio at each and every instant this common normal will be passing through a fixed point that is known as this pitch point which is lying on the line joining the center of rotations we have to define we have to derive this that this p is a fixed point we have to show that this p is a fixed point now now let us start the derivation of this law of gearing right i hope you understand what the what is the law of gearing means that this common normal will always pass through this pitch point that is a fixed point and that point is lying on the line joining the centers of rotation 
Now, now we have a mechanism, we have a mechanism and we have three links that is link number one, link number two and link number three. So we know that from the basic discussion of your velocity and acceleration diagram, if I apply the Kennedy theorem here, if I apply the Kennedy theorem to this mechanism, Kennedy theorem says that for a relative motion between any three links of a mechanism, their three instantaneous center of rotation will lie in a straight line. Right. So here we have, if we can say here we have your, suppose here we have the three links that is link one, link two and link three. So according to this Kennedy theorem, the I center that is I one, two, or if I can write like this. So Kennedy theorem is saying that I one, two, I one, three, and I two three will lie on a straight line. This will lie on a straight line. On a straight line. Now let us find out where these instantaneous centers are. So this link one and link two has a high as a lower pair at this point O2. So we can say that this is your I12, right? Basic I centers we know. This is your I12. This point, this point is your I13. Because it is a lower pair, I13. Right? Now, where is the I23? We know that this 2 and 3 will be in contact with, with each other at this point Q. So, from the common definition of the I center, we can say that I23 will lie on this line. Lie on this common normal. Right? We know that this will lie on the common normal. I will, I23 will lie on this line. And we can say that, we can say that because these three instantaneous center I12, I13 and I23 will be in a straight line. That means obviously if I23 is lying on this straight line, so and this I12, I13 and I23 will be in a straight line, then we can say that this, this point is your I23. To maintain the Kennedy theorem, to satisfy the Kennedy theorem, so that I12, I23 and I13 will be in a straight line. So we can say that I23 is here at pitch point. At pitch point, we have I23. Right? Now, now if I can say that if this is a pitch point P, this is I23. I23 means if I consider this pitch point on the point on the link 2. And if I consider this pitch point on the link 3, then their velocities will be same. Right? Their velocities will be same. That is the concept of I23. So I can say that, I can say that velocity of point P when consider on body 2. Right? We can say that the velocity of point P when it is consider on body 2. will be equal to velocity of point P when this will be considered on body 3. This is the concept of I center I23. Right. So this point will be having same velocity if we consider in on body 1 or on body 2. Now, what is the velocity of this point P when I consider this on body 1? So this will be equal to this will be equal to the angular velocity of this link omega 2 into into this distance o2 p because i can say that this angular this link 2 will be in pure rotation about this point o2 so i can say that this velocity this will be equal to this will be equal to omega 2 into omega 2 into this distance o2 p omega 2 into O2P or if you are not able to understand this, so if I apply the Kennedy theorem, if I apply the Kennedy theorem, 
so we have we have i23 we have to see for i23 so we can say that from here we can say that the velocity of the instantaneous center 2 3 will be equal to this will be equal to your omega 2 into distance between i 2 3 i 1 2 right from Kennedy theorem this will be equal to omega 3 into distance between i 2 3 from i 1 3 from i 1 3 right this you can write for the Kennedy theorem from Kennedy theorem I can write this now this will be equal to omega 2 into omega 2 into i 2 3 is this one i 1 2 is this one this distance is o 2 p o 2 p this will be equal to omega 3 into i 2 3 and i 1 3 this distance is o 4 p o 4 p right so from here I can write that omega 2 by omega 3 will be equal to o 4 p divided by o 2 p this is your formula right from here we can get that omega 2 by omega 3 will be equal to omega 2 by omega 3 will be equal to o 4 by p divided by o 2 by p right now from the gears equation from the gear definition we always want this is the velocity ratio right in this case the velocity ratio is if I write here that the velocity ratio in this case is omega 2 by omega 3 this is the velocity ratio and we have to maintain this constant at each and every point we have to maintain this constant this is the need of the gears right now if I want to maintain this constant I want to maintain this velocity ratio omega 2 by omega 3 as a constant so I can say if this is the constant if this we have to make constant so from here I can write that omega O4 P divided by O2 P this ratio will be constant this ratio is a constant and from this diagram you can see that O2 and O4 this these two points are fixed point these two points are fixed point they cannot this this gear is rotating about this center this gear is rotating about this center so we can say that from here I can write that your O2 and O4 are fixed points because they are the center of rotation they will not change right these are the fixed points this implies that if you maintain this ratio constant that O4 P divided by O2 P if you maintain this ratio constant that means this point P must be a fixed point right then only you can maintain this ratio constant no if this p point will vary then this ratio will not be constant so to maintain this constant we can say that p is also a fixed point p is also a fixed point now hence i prove that this p point this point p which is known as pitch point is a constant point or is a fixed point and if this is a fixed point then this line of action will always pass through this point p right because if suppose if suppose this gear at after some time if this gear will be in contact with any other point of this gear right when they will start moving suppose this this gear 3 will be in contact with this gear 2 at this point let us say right then we have to draw a common normal at that point so because we want this velocity ratio constant so the this velocity ratio constant will be only possible when this p point will be a fixed point so at each and every instant at each and every point of contact if you draw a line of action if you draw a your common normal then that common normal will always pass through this fixed point that is p that is a pitch point right so from here we can say that we can say that this implies that common normal common normal at the point of contact 
कॉमन नॉर्मल एट द पॉइंट ऑफ कॉन्टैक्ट विल पास थ्रू ए विल पास थ्रू ए फिक्स्ड पॉइंट ऑलवेज विल पास थ्रू ए फिक्स्ड पॉइंट दैट इज योर पिच पॉइंट पी एंड ऑलवेज इट विल पास थ्रू दिस ऑलवेज राइट सो दिस इज द लॉ ऑफ गियरिंग एंड इन सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दे विल आस्क द विलोसिटी ऑफ स्लाइडिंग इन सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दे विल आस्क वट इज द विलोसिटी ऑफ स्लाइडिंग इन दिस केस velocity of sliding don't confuse that this is slipping right just remember one thing we we are i am saying that the gears must be in pure rolling motion that means rolling without slipping slip must not be there but they can slide they can slide right slipping is not possible this slipping is not possible but they can slide now we want to find the velocity of sliding i am not deriving the equation simply i am writing the formula that the velocity of sliding at this point will be equal to your angular velocity of link 2 or gear 1 suppose plus angular velocity of this gear 3 into this distance between the point of contact and pitch point this is your velocity of sliding you have to remember this this is the velocity of sliding and when the suppose when the when your point of contact is at pitch point there may be a case there after some time that the point of contact is at this point at pitch point then we can say that in that case the velocity of sliding will be zero otherwise the velocity of sliding will be equal to omega 2 plus omega 3 into this distance qp this is known as velocity of sliding so this is all about the law of gearing and we always want that any profile of the gear any profile of the gear has to satisfy this law of gearing at each and every point of contact so those profiles which satisfy the law of gearing are known as conjugate profile are known as conjugate profile and we have two conjugate profiles which we have to discuss first one is the involute profile and another one is the cycloid profile right the main our main concern is about our main discussion is limited to the involute profile we have to see and after that we will go with the cycloid profile so this is your law of gearing